What's going on everybody? Ronnie Moore here with Bassmaster and I've got the man Hank Cherry, two-time Bassmaster Classic Champion, back to back with me. And today, Hank, we're going to see yourself in a video game and, and really talk about your career, about the Dovetail Bassmaster Fishing 2022 game. Maybe catch some fish as well. You're going to guide me around. But first off, I wanted to get your reaction to the game. You've obviously got to see it the last few days. Your son's got to play. You've got to cast and catch some fish as well. What's it like being in a video game and kind of seeing your, your likeness in that deal? It is crazy being a part of the video game, but just the likeness of the lakes alone, it's like you can reminisce on things that happen and places you've been. And Just looking here at Gunnersville on the screen right now, it's crazy the detail and how much it looks just like the lake. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. And so this Gunnersville uh, game that we're playing right now, it's free mode. We're not doing a tournament right now, but we're just fishing. It's a little bit dusk. We're getting towards the later part of the day, a little bit of uh, darkness creeping in. But, Hank, this is the site of your first classic victory. You got to win in 2020, and uh, then the world really changed. But that first classic victory really accomplished a lot in your in your life. And so as I'm fishing here, walk me through what that was like winning a Bassmaster Classic. It's something that every fisherman that competes uh, competitively in tournaments dreams of doing. It's absolutely amazing. It's everything that you dream about plus more. And, uh, you know, you can't really describe the feeling. All I can tell you is excellent, super happy, whatever you want to do. None of that comes close to describing what was going on through my head and through my family's head when I won that first one at Gunnerville. It was an absolutely amazing experience. So in this part of the lake that the Gunnersville map is designed after, it is where we take off from that Scottsboro region, the north part of the lake. Now, you found success as I'm hooked up right now. Hopefully, I don't lose it with the pressure. But you found success across all parts of the lake. But in your classic victory, you were a little farther south on the uh, bridges and whatnot. How was it in practice developing a pattern that eventually would lead to a classic victory? That's got to be something that's a good feeling when you kind of find that clue. Well, you know, the, the, the biggest thing with this one was I never really uh, got to go where I practiced. I kind of went off a little bit of history and a little bit of instinct, and it paid off. You know, those those bridges and causeways at Gunnersville are gateways to the spawning grounds and back out to the humps and flats and humps where they go in the summertime. Uh, concentrate on that. One lucky patch of grass that um, really paid off big time the first day. And, you know, that about, that about sums it up. I just tried to fish smart. I stayed close, fished the conditions, and it really turned out well for me. So, Hank, one of the big stories of your classic win and really of your career, you got into the Elite Series. Uh, by one ounce, you got into the Classic. When you won that Open in 2012, you made the Elite Series in the Classic, and really one ounce propelled you to the opportunities you've had. You went on to win Rookie of the Year. You had a shot at winning your first Classic in your first ever attempt at it. So I've got a, looks like a mega bluegill on right now. So having coming so close in your first one and experiencing a Classic, but really not taking in the lights and the, and the sounds of it, because it is a huge skept, uh, a spectacle, you didn't really get to take it in because you were under pressure to catch fish that week and really win. Now, with plenty of years under your belt and winning it in your seventh or eighth season, did you have a lot more respect for it because you had been there and not won yet? Well, you know, that tournament is so hard to reach no matter which way you get there. And once you're there, it can be overwhelming because there's so much stuff going on, so many cameras in your face, so many people wanting to talk to you, take pictures, interview you. Uh, you're having to make time for the family, make time for tackle prep, um, media day, everything across the board. So it's a really, really wild time. Um, it's probably the most hectic uh, week of bass fishing all year. But I, I really like it with no points involved. You're going out. It's winner take all, and that really sit, suits my style of fishing. So as we're you looking at I know, I know. I, that's why I had to stop the boat right there at the end of the dock. And what's really cool, Hank, as we look at the game, I'm hooked up. I did. I look at that. I called it. You called it. I called it. We're hooked up. It might not be the biggest, but I'm going to try to do the landing chance deal. It just came out of the rink. I messed it up that first time. Let's see if I can land this sucker. I did. I got him in the boat. First bass on the live deal right at dusk. Now, what's the difference? Just an under a pound. It's not one we want to turn it for sure, but we're gonna we're gonna set the tone with that when we get a, a bass in the boat. We've caught some other species already, but uh, 
Tell me about, obviously Gunnersville is a special place, but tell me about fishing around this dusk time, that, that time right after the, you know, the afternoon, uh, all the tournaments are checked in, and then all of a sudden it starts to get a little dark, but especially in the summertime, what does that do to the fish when you're fishing close to that low light time period? That, that time of year and fishing at this time can be awesome, but the problem with the tournament anglers, it can be hugely misleading. You can find something late in the day thinking you're going to go back there a morning from now or two mornings from now and they're going to be there and they're just not because they're constantly moving so that's why you got to always be aware of they, that late afternoon bite because it will come back and bite you in the butt. and so we're obviously picked a, we picked the time period you know on the map it kind of gives us a recommendation it said that maybe during the middle of the day when it was the hottest it might not be the best and so we picked the afternoon to the evening uh you obviously like to fish around your hometown lake norman uh, is your home lake, and a lot of night tournaments happen. Uh, do you kind of amp up for those local night tournaments in the summer like you would for a Bassmaster event? I mean, you got to do all the, the tackle prep and the rods and, the, and making sure you have the right baits. That's the wrong guy. Right that is there. the wrong um, species you know, for I, sure. I love night fishing. I don't get to do it as much as I used to, but around here in the springtime, especially before the bass get on the bed and some of the gizzards that start spawning, we get to throw those great big top waters at night, really, really shallow. Oh, you get some explosive, oh, explosive oh. bites. And then, uh, you know, like the, a bladed jig and a jig at nighttime on the rocks here, uh, it's just phenomenal. But even at this time, when we fish night tournaments, this time of the evening, it's tough. It really doesn't get good until it gets dark. And I don't know if that's the transition with them being able to see with light to dark and however that runs. But definitely, especially early in the year, the late afternoon, you can get some humongous bites. Lake Gunnersville is a, a legendary lake, and, and you've had a lot of good finishes there in the Elite Series events there. It's really a, a second home, seemingly. I got another one. This is a good a little area you brought me to before we before we started recording. Accomplish an achievement. We got the Century Fish. Look at that. Catch 100 fish so far in the game. I think we've caught most of them today with your <laughs> son and you out here uh, playing the game. A little nice little black, black crappy right there. Not the species that we target in tournaments, but it's a species that anglers get to enjoy in Gunnersville, a lot of different lakes. They enjoy them in the prime pan more. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what What is, we were talking about Gunnersville and how you kind of just, I mean, you do well here no matter what time it is. Classic time in that February, March time period or in the summer, in, in the spring, in the fall. What is it about this place? Because it's totally different than our, and then your home lake, Lake Norman. Uh, with all the grass and, and how deep they get, how shallow they get, what do you find comfort-wise at Gunnersville for you? Um, you know, the first time I went there, Gunnersville kicked my butt. I mean, I, I weighed in a limited spot of bass two days in a row. I had really no idea what I was doing, but I was trying to fish the way they fish at Gunnersville. And ever since then, I tried to adapt the way I fish at home to Gunnersville, and it's really paid off. I don't know if it's the best way to do it. I just know they don't see baits the way that I present them. And I think that's made me successful. Well, Hank, I wanted to talk to you. Also, uh, we talked about your career. You've obviously got uh, some big-time accolades the last two years going back-to-back -back in the Classic. I'm going to actually take us out of here, and I'm going to change the time of day. I'm actually going to take us back to the morning time period. And so we're going to be able to see Gunnersville and how bright and vibrant it is. got that early morning sunrise as we go back. Uh, I'm going to have you take me around. You know Gunnersville pretty well. What do you want to fish right now early in the morning? This is, you've complimented this already. This looks like the same docks that you guys fish. They have matched the lake almost perfectly with what you see when you're actually there. It is absolutely amazing the way it looks. Um, even that little shallow dock right there off around that point, it looks just like that at the lake. Um, you've been through several areas. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've caught fish there before. It's kind of crazy looking at it. They've done an incredible job with the detail on what you're looking at. And right now, I think you're headed out and you're running up the river. Um, towards you know, that there's, towards that big bridge. Yeah, towards the yeah. bridge. And there's some, there's some rocky places and stuff. But you know, you can go up to that bridge early in the morning. Water's 67 degrees, I think, or temperature. And uh, probably a good chance to be some feeding activity going on. There. We're going to head up towards that bridge as, as long as the boundary allows us. And Gunnersville is one of those legendary lakes. They put that game, they put this lake in the game. They put Ray Roberts, your other classic victory. Some other places like Chickamauga, you caught your biggest tournament bass of your life in a tournament at Chickamauga. Uh, you've got Winyah Bay, which is in South Carolina, not not too far from here. Even the St. Lawrence River, a place that you love, and it's really a 
a lot of great destination lakes, bucket list lakes that people are fishing. They get a preview of it in this lake or in the game, and it's pretty accurate to what you would see when you go there. It's just just looking at exactly the detail. I mean, even to the bridge crossing lake here, it looks just and like the, it. the pocket right before the bridge yeah, and everything. It looks all the same. It is awesome. I'm going to try to see. I'm going to have you coach me up in a minute uh, on what you'd like me to, where you'd like me to go, what you'd like me to catch. But we made a good pick for last time right at dusk. And so maybe during the daylight we can make some good decisions as well. And so I know we went in the 2021 season. Dovetail Games was the presenting sponsor of the Sabine River Elite Series. I and mean, you got to meet some of the folks there. Yeah. When they told you, they said, hey, you're going to be in a fishing video game. What was your first reaction? I mean, obviously that's that's pretty big time. Like that's that's pretty cool. I'm snagged right now. I hung up. Now that's hung up. That is not what I want. Okay, I got no, it. I, being, being a video game, I mean, it's it's that's so cool. It's sweet. You know, I, I didn't play a whole lot of video games growing up. I mean, I did like to play a little bit of Tiger Woods golf, things like that. But my wife successfully, when we met, erased everything that I saw <laughs> in a year or two. So uh, I kind of gave up with video games with that. But um. I mean, it's, it's a great feeling, and, you know, especially on the youth can get to play this. I've already had some comments, and they're excited to get to experience this. And, you know, you never know. You can listen to Talk Talk. You know, he learned to bass fish off video games. Yes, that fact so that Talk, oh, my God, I lost. Look at that. I was talking yeah. with my hands. I wasn't. So, you got to pay attention. It, it's crazy, but, I mean, definitely, it's, it's definitely a, a good feeling just to be asked to be part of the game. It is cool. You mentioned that Taku Ito. Uh, one of the Elite Series pros that's also in the game. I'm hooked up immediately. Look at that. Landed right on his head. I think it's another crappy. But Taku mentioned that. He knew about Bassmaster and uh, professional fishing in the classic via video game. What do you think this does for the sport? One thing, it's a great time of year for this game to debut. Uh, that late October time period. We, I mean, we were we were at a tournament together. And it was 20, 28 degrees this morning. Yes. And so it's not ideally the time... Uh, for a lot of big tournaments. It's really getting cooler. Um, the days are much shorter, so a lot of people are going to be in. Yeah, That's a good one. A lot of people are going to be indoors for this winter getting a taste of this game. And I saw you critiquing your son today playing, and, and I think we need some of that raw footage of it. That is a big one. I'm going to try to land this one. But, yes, uh, this is a great time for people to start to play the game and learn about bass fishing. It's a very addicting game already uh, just because – the time aspect, you want to catch the biggest, and you're kind of motivated to, to beat some of the game, the players in the game. Oh, it's just cool. I mean, just watching this fish fight and cut through the water. That's a big striker. It, it's pretty cool. So you got a striper. And the multi-species thing, that make, I think, is what makes it kind of neat because you're not just catching bass. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to land this fish. It got out of the ring. Come on, get in there. Let me catch this one. Oh, I messed that up. Everybody watching this, you don't want Ron uh, no. with the net. In the I, hey, I can land them a little better in person, but it's kind of tricky with this big of a fish. You got a small window to, to try to cap. I got it that time. So you're not going to cap. Look at that big one. That is a big old striper. Hank, you've been known to be a multi species angler. That's a 13 pound, 5 ounce striper. I'm going to take a screenshot of that one real quick. Look at that. We'll upload that to the Dovetail Live. You're a multi-species angler. Yeah. I mean, you love bass fishing. That's how you make your living. But you love carp fishing. You catch striper. Lake Norman, your home lake, is a great place for some striper fishing and some and white bass indefinitely. You catch everything. White perch, white bass, whatever. Black That's another good one. That is a good one. I cannot. We catch don't them, lose this we one. We like catching them all. You know, I, I enjoy carp fishing. I enjoy flounder fishing. Uh Red fishing, I mean, if it bites, I like to catch. The only thing I don't like to do is go out in the ocean. Inshore, I'm good. Out off the bank, I don't want to do that. That uh, seasickness is a deal. It's, oh, see, look, the lot bigger than water. It's just like Bassmaster Live. We thought it was a giant. Yeah. But I'll take that 12-ounce that twelve ounce <laughs> spotted bass right now. So, Hank, I've obviously found a spot. You can look at the electronics, the graph at the top of the deal. You can see how many fish are in this area. And that's one thing that we've already picked up on very quickly. Your son did as well. When we're fishing in a spot, if they don't see them on the graph, you kind of lose a little bit of confidence. How is that in real life with the best technology and the best graphs yeah, and what I just call this giant striper? How is that in real life when you pull up to a spot and you don't see fish on your graph? Do you lose? Do you fish a little bit in real life, or 
Uh, do you do you maybe move to the next pocket just immediately and not waste time? Because time is money for you guys. It depends on what's going on. I kept trying to find the no. best tractor. Um, but you know, with, with, with my live scope, with my Garmin units, you know, they let me know real fast what's there. Um, I don't by any means think that I can catch everything that's there, but they let me know when I'm around them. And you know, it's just it's just one of those deals you have to have confidence in your equipment and what you're doing with it. I am not. I'm not the best. I will say that. I'm not a professional video game fish lander, but I'm just wearing it out. I'm just wearing this. I see. Look at that. I did it. Perseverance. That is a big striper. Not as big as the not first one. Like might, yeah, they might call that like that. It is a striper. Five eleven. So I've obviously found one of those, what's very cool about this is I have caught a small spot of bass on this spot, but I've caught two striper. We've seen some other species, but they do group up like this in real life. This is pretty accurate. If you yeah. catch striper, you're going to be able to catch them maybe cast after cast. I'm trying to weed through them. Maybe there's a big bass in there. I'm sure there is. You can keep it away from them. Oh, that was a good bass. That was a good bass. He stopped. Crap is behind it. Now, one thing that's very interesting with this is I'm hooked oh, up yeah. again. This is, a good, this is a perfect time for this. Look at the drag and the brake system on your reel in the bottom left of the screen where it says hook slipping. That is an important aspect that is added to this game, which is very cool, is there are times when the fish is bigger than you expect and it pulls drag and you have to really do that in real life to make sure you don't break off. It's a small white bass right there. Not, yeah, not it's just too the bad. We're going to have to just weed through them. And the aspects, that's pretty realistic. That's It's very cool to see that drag system because I broke off a lot of the toothy critters, the musky and the pike and those different fish. I broke them off in this game because I didn't have the drag set right or I tried uh, to horse them in the boat. This is a pretty cool little spot right here. And you can see they're still loaded on the graph. I made a cast to the left just to see if there was bass. And I don't see hardly anything. So I'm going to go back to where we just cast it. And there's a big striper. There's a big striper right there. This. And you were talking about this earlier when we were playing. There was a, a, there's a large mouth right there. Oh, there it is. Little guy. Don't lose this bass because this will be the first large mouth, I think, maybe. You know, on this spot. See, by just seeing that right now, it's looking to me like playing the game, like maybe we're a little too close. To the further you got out, the less there was a large one. Yeah. It seemed like there were more. So if you're going to coach me up right now, you want me to back up? I would back up and just, just to see and make you keep making the same catch. You back up just enough where you cover that ground a little more and just make the same catch. It's cool as you can do this with the troll motor as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this line up right. That grass to my left is going to be the little marker for me. I'm trying to make a good cast, and maybe we'll get out of the striper and into the bass. That obviously worked, which you just recommended for that last fish, caught it close to the bank. But Ooh, man, I say that in the door. But I did see right when we landed, a bass swam away. It was a big old bluegill. Brim. And we're watching this on a big screen, and, and how realistic... Some of these fish actually look when you get them out of the water, even when you see them in the water, we can get excited. Like there's a crappy, there's some grass there. And you were mentioning earlier how the grass under the water, especially like Chickamauga and even those yellow yellow Ooh. flowers there, that's a big old catfish. Oh, I got one right at the boat. I need to back up some more even. And now it's pulling. So now I got to do this drag system. That's one good thing right here. Fish on. If anything is green, right above that dial on the left side of your screen, if anything's green, that is good. If anything is red, it's either the fish is too tight of a drag or too loose. And I need to back it off so I don't break it off, and I need to tighten it so I don't lose it. Now, Hank, you're going to give me a compliment and grade my fit. There there is I landed the big one about as good as I possibly could. Look at that one. A trophy well, spotted spot bass. Hit right, he bit right at the boat. He did bite right at the boat. I'm going to back this up. I'm going to take a screenshot of that one, upload it, that one to Dovetail Live. Just so I can brag to the guys that I did catch a big old spot of ass. That actually would be my personal best spot of ass. I've caught about a couple. Um, I gotta remember to back us up. I've caught some four and a half pound spot of bass, but that was a five four. What's your biggest spot of bass? My biggest spot of bass is right at six pounds. Where was that at? On Lake Dome. Like or right here? Yeah, right here. Tournament or fun fishing? Uh, I was in a tournament. Nice. Spring, winter, summer? Um, it was actually. Late spring, early summer. I've caught a bunch of four or five times you know, in the wintertime when water gets dirty on the crankbait and whatnot. 
and we have found a good spot. One thing that's very interesting, echo this a little bit, is that we caught a bunch of striper, but the bass species that we've caught have been spotted bass. Yep. How similarly do spotted bass act with striper? Because spotted bass are closer to largemouth, but the way they behave, it's a little kind of like a striper. They're wing. nomadic. You know, around here, we don't have so much the stripers anymore as we have the hybrids, and you'll catch them all grouped in together. Um, and then you'll, you'll catch the bigger spotted bass around the white perch schools, especially in the wintertime. There's a big one. There was, I know. You to cast a little farther to the right. It. That's the one thing I have not landed in this game is a big really? catfish. Oh, he's on. coming for it. Oh, it's a big striper. I saw the stripes. Yeah, I think it was a big striper. I got to make sure to drag on this one because it might start running. Yep, it's straining. We have found it. That's one that, hey, it's just like real life. Sometimes, look at that catfish that we saw in that fish bit. It's still running on the surface. When you go for a little while, you may not catch fish, but when you find them, sometimes you can find them schooled up. And those those spotted bass are nomadic like stripers, and they do sometimes tend to go together. Yeah. That's a good striper. I'm going to mark a waypoint on this. Four pound, 13 ounce striper. I'm going to mark a waypoint on this spot, which is really cool. I'm going to go to the menu, to the map, and I'm going to place a waypoint. Even though I could remember, this is the, the, um, I'm going to put a bass. I'm going to put a striper icon with the striper. This is the pocket right bes beside the big bridge. That's an easy place to remember for me mentally, but I'm going to mark it when I find that. Right I think there. it might be. Striper bass, it is. I'm going to mark it and, uh, and drop a waypoint, and I'll put it in red. Red. Select it. And now we're there. The so there's the waypoint. We just dropped it. I'm going to make you pick my next spot. We're all the way at the top boundary. I just marked it. Now I'm at the I'm at the ramp again. So now I got to drive around. I'm going to drive. So where are we going to go now? We're in that north portion of Gunnersville. Do you want me to go out to the main lake? Let me pull my map up right there. I got the little mini map. You head out that direction. I'm going to head out towards the main lake from that Scottsboro area where the takeoff is. We're watching it on a big screen right above us and on our display right here. It's pretty cool to see the boat shooting up a rooster tail. It's pretty accurate, and it's got yeah. the brand new Mercury. I know you've enjoyed having that on your boats. Oh, I definitely like that thing very much. So. Yeah, right around that point right there. Right around here? I got to slow down so I, don't, right so I don't hit that. Right there. I'll start on this point. Now, you want me to throw a swim bait, or you want me to throw that lipless uh, like I have been, or? Throw the lipless, throw it towards this rock. I'll throw that lipless. I'm going to go down and select it. further towards the seawall. But... And this is correct, right? Yeah, let me throw it there. So there's no fish on the graph, but I'm not going to doubt you. I did a, I did do an overpowered cast, so it's not going to go nearly where I want it to. Yeah. I threw it to the sky. I'm going to let that sink down a little bit. Oh, there he is in the background back there. See him. If I would have made a good cast, I might be right there in this zone. This has been fun. I'm glad we caught some striper. I'm glad we caught some spotted bass. I just want to catch that that seven plus pound largemouth. That I think I'm only first to do that. Yeah, your son uh, might be a prodigy at it. He already won his first tournament. <laughs> Went from I know he. Hopefully he stays right there, and we can bring this. Lipless crankbait right through there, and even in real life, you want to pick. I mean, you want to pick baits that work in the game, but in real life, a lipless crankbait is great for the grass. Yeah, and gunners will be able to pull it and snatch it out of the grass. It, it's definitely. kind of weedless for the most part. I mean, not weedless, but you can you can definitely yank it out of the grass. I got right up on that shallow spot. I'm gonna try to catch that. I'm gonna make a half a cast. No. Three quarters of the cast will be that. Ooh, we got one right there. Oh, look at all of Oh, oh no! I yanked it away from he him. Did. I yanked it right away from him. I got excited. He came back for it though. That's another striper, I believe. I don't think so. Let's see, oh, it's definitely pulling, jumping, and bring one. Holy cow! 
It is. I think it might be. You might be right on that. Let me see if I can land him. Good. Got it done. Oh, it is a big white bat. Or a big striker, man. I, I thought he was green. He fooled me. White bat. Trophy, trophy white bat. They were, they were large enough up there. There were. I'm going to make. I'm gonna try to make it another 85% cast. Right there. I got one right there. I saw him bite it before it even sank. It might be a big blue crappy, a big crappy, a big blue deal. I like the species after that. I don't like yeah, that. Yeah. Yellow crappy, that's black crappy. You just black got crappy. a pigment. He's, big, yeah. he's got that pigment from being right up on the bank. Yeah, big sucker swimming on top of the water I'm going to take a screenshot real quick because that's the brightest. Better, better right. Right. Okay. I'm make another three quarter cast, eighty three percent. Now there's a couple right different cast modes. You can do right a there. really expert cast, or you can do that basic cast. And just to ensure that I don't make a, a fool of myself on here, I went with the basic cast because that. Oh, that's a good thing. That's a good. Oh no! Good gracious! I had my shot. You you called the shot, and I lost the fish. Let's see if I can hold it. Let me get it. He still know he lives there. We know it. I said eighty three percent for that seventy eight. It's pretty close. You know, I'm on top of him. Maybe he'll come back to bite. Right. Oh, I got a big catfish. Catch this is the yes. I've never landed one. I've always broke them off. Got to play with the drag if this one starts to swim it's around. Not big enough. It's not. Oh, he's pulling. Hold on, back it off. Let him take some drag. Now he's growing on me. He's one of those ones you say he didn't know he, he didn't know he was hooked yet. Uh, now he knows he's hooked. This, this might not be a lot of to in there. Yeah, this might not be what you want in a tournament. That thing is slimy. I recommend if you catch a catfish in real life, it's a lamb. <laughs> you hold him as, as least as you can because he is a slimy. That's a seven and a half pounder. Not too bad a one. I got to get back to that bass I jumped off of. Maybe I'll be able to present it, present it correctly. I'll let it sink down. We see some bass there. there. Okay. And what's cool is they have that right there above the dial, the constant. Right where it says fish on, on the top left of the uh, dial there. Or top right of the dial. It That's gives you some it. feedback. That's another one of those guys. It is another black. It gives you feedback on if you're reeling your bait the way it's supposed to. If, it, if you're too high on the column, too low. You can kind of tell because that red and green. It's kind of correcting you. Just like you're correcting me now. That gives you a little bit of input on how close you are to possibly doing it. Doing it correct. I just want to find that lineup That's where right. we catch big, large mouth, every cast back and forth. Oh, striper. striper. See, I got that constant green right now, so that's the speed yeah, that I'm supposed to be doing that. Don't have to do that. Further right. I don't have to do that. I'm going to make a... I'll try to get 95% cast. I'm going to make this one in. I'll try to get... A little bit more to the left, yeah. right? Okay. 95. Almost perfect. Let's see if we can get it there. Last time you told me to do that in the creek, I backed up. And I caught a good one. My trophy spotted bass on here. I think I'm snagged. Okay. Don't don't get snagged. I'm snagged. Okay. Let me shake it. Oh, I got it free. Look at that. There he was. And there's another. And I got one. Look at that. That's real life though. When you get snagged, if you can Lots set that, that is another black crap. I have found the crappy hole. If somebody at Gunnersville right now wants to go catch some crappy, I know exactly where they're at. Dinner. Let's pick up. Let's pick up. I'm gonna run down. We fish that near that island. Where are you want me to go? I'm gonna go towards the main lake a little bit more, like we were earlier, but during the daylight time now. Now, don't expose to me any of your actual spots that you catch them on the lake, because it is so realistic. But get me, get me close. We'll get us in the realm of, of maybe I can go back in these pockets, or I can go left I'm towards the main lake. Right, right, right here. Yeah. Let's go. We got a little point. With some grass and lily pad, yeah, our little right island. There. We got a dock that extends. Let's try to do this. Let's see. 
The one good thing about this game is you can run all day and not have to fill up your gas tank. Yes, yes. Is definitely. What is very cool as well is when you go regionally. We were at the St. Lawrence River earlier. We threw a swim bait out. Those fish were coming up and looking at it but not reacting. We put on the lipless. We were able to get those fish to commit. Same thing here. We threw the swim jig a little bit earlier. Couldn't get them to commit. Picked up the lipless. We are able to get them to uh, react to it. I just paused it right there and got one to come towards it. If you are an awesome cracker fish. I right, see. You know what? I don't know if that was a compliment or not. But I think in this, in this terminology it was. But. Hank, this is obviously, this has been fun. We got to catch a couple fish, and you got to give some input, but what an accomplishment, not only being in the video game, but in, in real life of two classics in a row. We've actually got, if you if you move your shoulder, you got the cowboy hat on your classic trophy right there. Yeah. And uh, in this game mode, you can work your way from college to the opens to the elite, and then I'm going to face you with college. You said the one thing that wasn't realistic about this earlier was that when I finished the tournament we won, you were fourth in the tournament. Yeah. And you said that's just that's not real. Yeah. <laughs> Hank Cherry, Bassmaster Classic Champion 2020 and 2021. I'm Ronnie Moore. Thank you guys for joining us today. We got a little bit of fishing out of Lake Gunnersville, catching some spotted bass, some striper, and some crappie. And I did land a catfish. I didn't break that one off. I lost a shot at a big one, though. Thank you guys for joining us. A great talk here with the two-time Classic Champ Hank Cherry. Getting a little taste of the dovetail games. Bassmaster Fishing 2022, local or in stores now in the Xbox Game Pass. You can buy it on all consoles as well. Thank you guys for joining us. This was a fun time. We have to do it again.